Live news at 10 starts right now. To see that many police, I knew it was something pretty serious. One person is injured after an officer involved shooting in Cobb County. The latest on the investigation straight ahead. But first tonight, we start with breaking news out of Peach County. One deputy is dead and another injured after a shooting in Byron in Peach County. The GBI is currently handling the investigation. A Fox 5's Claire Simmons joining us live from Peach County tonight with more. Claire, what can you tell us tonight? Good evening, Deidre. This is still a very active scene here in Peach County. We're right at the intersection of Hardison Road and Highway 42. I'm going to step out of the way, show you what's going on. You can see the GBI, several other agencies still out here tonight. They tell us they will be out here for several more hours as they continue to process the scene. So the big question, how did we get here? Now, according to the GBI, they just told us in the last half hour or so that this started out as a dispute between neighbors. There were uh, two people out here in the neighborhood. They were out, one on an ATV, another on a motorcycle, when one neighbor, unhappy with what they were doing, came outside with a gun and threatened them. That's when those two people went back inside their home homes and called 911 to ask for help. Now we're told that two Peach County deputies responded to this scene. They went, they spoke to the people who dialed 911, and then they went to go talk to the neighbor who allegedly threatened them. That's when they parked in the driveway, they got out of the car, and as soon as they did, we're told that that neighbor opened fire, striking both of those deputies. The neighbors who originally called 911, well, they called immediately back to report an officer down, and that is when agencies from all over this area came to respond and aid those two officers who were down, we're told. Then they exchanged gunfire with the suspect who was struck in the uh, stomach area and was then taken into custody and taken to a local hospital. We are told one deputy uh, was taken to one hospital in Macon. Another deputy was taken to a local hospital here in the Byron area. One has died. The other, uh, the condition is unknown at this point. The suspect, we don't know the extent of his injuries, but we know this has shaken this community. Well, it's very troubling to me. I did not know these officers or deputies personally, but just getting out here on this kind of scene, these guys came out here to help people. That's what's troubling to me. Now, we did speak to the Peach County coroner earlier this evening. He identified the deputy who passed away as Patrick Sondren, 41 years old. We aren't sure at this point uh, how long Sondren was with the force, but again, uh, he has been identified as 41 year old Patrick Sondren uh, uh, with the Peach County Sheriff's Office. And as far as the suspect goes, uh, police here have not identified him yet. Uh, they have not even said whether this was someone they have had dealings with in the past, um, but again, at this point, that suspect, as far as we know, is in the hospital being treated for a gunshot wound to the abdomen. The second deputy's identity not yet released. Of course, this is an ongoing story. We'll continue to keep you updated on Fox 5 News Edge at 11. For now, we are live in Peach County. Claire Sims, Fox 5 News. Claire, thank you for the latest there. A Cobb County neighborhood trying to get back to normal tonight after an officer involved shooting there. Now, the incident happened this morning in Mableton, and the GBI says it all started with a 911 report of suspicious activity. Well, Fox 5's Marissa Mitchell is live at Cobb County Police Headquarters. And Marissa, you've learned one of their officers stopped people in a car that turned out to be stolen. Yes, and the GBI says that officer tried to stop the car, and when he did, those individuals got out and ran, and that's when the shooting occurred. Still, people living in that neighborhood tell me they have never noticed such crime or law enforcement activity on their street. GBI officers and Cobb County police flooded this subdivision Sunday on Nellie Brook Drive, calming the scene, studying evidence, and making sure no one got in the way. There are several cars lined up. They won't let cars drive through or any of that. It's disconcerting and it's surreal and a little weird. Some residents so disturbed they didn't want to show their faces, but that wasn't the case for Anna Morgan Clark. I heard like three or four bullet shots, and I thought it was a tree falling. She tells Fox 5 she was getting ready for church when chaos erupted and the shots kept coming. I heard about five or six more bullet shots. According to the GBI, a Cobb County police officer responded to this area
area on a suspicious activity call. He found people inside of a car and realized it was stolen. The GBI says the people inside the vehicle tried to run away. The officer chased one of them and a short time later discharged his weapon. Um, to see that many police, I knew it was something pretty serious. Um, and now to see the GBI and see on the internet that uh, an officer shot somebody today, it's it blows my mind. The GBI says the person wounded is in stable condition and no officers were hurt during the incident. Fox 5 cameras were rolling when officers removed this car from the scene. We're working to learn if it's the stolen vehicle involved in the incident. It's highly unusual. You don't see it at all over here. I was nervous. I wanted to jump to the floor because I didn't know what was going on at that point. It made me feel a little uneasy because this is a very quiet community. We asked the GBI how many people were inside of that car as well as if there were any arrests made, but we are still waiting tonight for those details. That's the latest here at Cobb County Police Headquarters. Marissa Mitchell, Fox 5 News. Thank you, Marissa. A Macon woman is charged with murder in a shooting at a MARTA station last night. Police say Lucien Fox and the male victim got into an argument at the HE home station. They say that ended with a man being shot. He was taken to Grady Hospital where he later died from his injuries. In addition to murder, Fox is also charged with possession of a firearm during the commission of a crime. A 12-year-old boy is recovering after he was accidentally shot by an 11-year-old. Clayton County Police say the children were playing with a firearm at a home on Fitzgerald Road in Jonesboro yesterday when the gun went off. Medics lifelined the boy to the hospital where he underwent surgery. Investigators say the boys found the gun inside the house. And right now, detectives are trying to confirm who the weapon belonged to. A family, heartbroken and desperate for answers after their loved one is gunned down at his grandmother's northwest Atlanta home. Atlanta police released surveillance video of a man they call a person of interest. Tonight, that family is begging anyone with information to come forward. Well, Fox 5's Nathalie Pozo spoke to the family about what they say is a senseless killing. CJ, we will really miss you. A family desperate for answers after their loved one, 28-year-old Carl Cosby II, known as CJ, was shot and killed at his grandmother's Northwest Atlanta home on Vanderbilt Court Wednesday night. Fired three shots into the stream, into my nephew's stomach. On Sunday, CJ's uncle was at the house repairing the door and screen that was riddled with bullets. Atlanta police releasing this surveillance video of a man they call a person of interest. By 12 o'clock Monday, I'm asking you to turn yourself in. Um, you made a mistake. I forgive you. I heartily forgive you. Just turn yourself in. Family members tell me CJ loved cars and wanted to own a paint shop one day. His joy was his nine-year-old daughter and five-year-old son. He was a free spirit. He was always the life of the party. Uh, he was always giving, caring. CJ's father tells me the family does not have enough money to bury CJ and have started a fundraising site. He says CJ was raised with a lot of love from him, his mother, aunts and uncles, and his 75-year-old grandmother, who he lived with for 13 years. His grandmother suffered a mild heart attack after learning the tragic news. He usually doesn't answer the door. Usually it's my mom. Regardless of which one, it shouldn't have happened. The family had this message for the killer or anyone who knows who he is. If anyone know who this person is, please, please turn him in so we can put closure to this and so justice will be served. CJ did not deserve to die like this. In Northwest Atlanta, Nathalie Pozo, Fox 5 News. Happening right now, Gwinnett County Police need your help finding this woman. Jaratul Chowdhury, she was reported missing Thursday night around Midway Court in Lilburn. The 27-year-old was last seen wearing sweatpants and either sneakers or sandals. Police do not suspect foul play in her disappearance. If you have any information on her whereabouts, you're asked to call police. 
The Colonial Pipeline is back up and running tonight. The company shut down Line 1 temporarily after an explosion on Monday. One worker was killed and several others injured in the blast. According to Colonial Pipeline, gas started flowing through Line 1 again at 5.45 this morning. Well, what a great way to end the weekend. Another beautiful day, but a lot of folks uh, wouldn't have minded a little rain this weekend. Fox 5 Storm Team Meteorologist Jeff Hill in the Weather Center. And uh, sadly, it sounds like we're not getting it any time soon. I really don't think we are, Deidre. I mean, we have a slight chance maybe of a shower or two late Tuesday night, early Wednesday, but that's not going to be enough. we got wildfires going on now in parts of North Georgia and up into North Carolina. So it would be good to get some of that rainfall in here. But uh, again, I don't think we're going to see much. Let's take a look at the satellite picture. We've got some high clouds moving overhead. These are at about 20 to 25,000 feet. So very high, thin, cirrus clouds. Those will continue to sweep through in the overnight hours. Meanwhile, out west got some action going on over in Oklahoma. There was a pretty large earthquake uh, just about an hour, hour and a half ago near Cushing, which is just outside of Stillwater, Oklahoma. Some structural damage there with a 5.0 magnitude earthquake. That's, uh, that's a pretty big uh, Timber for out there. Here's a look at our frost advisory we have for Rabin County. Temperatures are going to get down into the 30s, so there may be some patchy frost second night in a row. You've had it up there. Bring in or protect any sensitive plants that you have that want to make it through the night. Hey, the uh, drought monitor, we all know this. We're in a exceptional drought in a lot of locations, an extreme drought for the rest of North Georgia, so please, no burning this week. High fire danger is out there, not only due to the drought, but low humidity. We've got fires popping up. In fact, got a report this evening of a new fire up around the Cleveland, Georgia area. Current temperature right now is 62, dew point at 40. We have an east wind at 3 miles an hour. High temperature today was 75. Low this morning got down to 47. Stay tuned. We'll have that complete forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Deidre? Sounds good, Jeff. Thanks. Well, still to come with two days left before Election Day. Both presidential candidates are doing last-minute pushes to get voters to the polls. And one local church is celebrating its voters that have already made it out to the poll. Presidential candidates are making... And Cody has sports. Yeah, NFL Sundays, they're always fun because we get to see some of our...